here is where I would put my intro if I had one. Hi guys, welcome to my art channel where I talk about things you guys want to know. I get asked the question a lot, which is, hey Jules, how do you get those insane nitty gritty munch and crunch textures in your illustrations? And the best answer I have is to sign up to the fast track to get a carpal tunnel at 23 years old. Um, I'm only half kidding. I do have to take breaks a lot during drawing because the way I work requires me to use my brush at a very, very small size in order to get that extremely fine texture I make. Um, that being said, the brush I use is Joy Ang's pencil brush set to dissolve mode. When I color, I typically have it set to anywhere between 7 to 10 pixels on a 300 dpi canvas. For sketching and cleaning, the brush is only marginally bigger, maybe 12 pixels at most, maybe 15. Uh, for large areas that just need a flat color, I'll use the fill tool at 90% opacity and dissolve mode so it can match the texture of the rest of the illustration. Um, as far as coloring goes, I use a four color process that I learned from my senior year portfolio professor Lisk Fen, who I really love. Um, the process involves having four groups of multiply layers set to specific colors. Um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and what am I missing? Brown. Um, uh, each layer within the group is set to different opacities so that when blended with the other layers, I get a lot of different colors out of the same four colors and I can get away with not thinking too hard about color harmony, which is like really convenient because I really hate thinking too hard. Um, so we're like two minutes into the time lapse and I'm kind of hoping the process is starting to look a little clearer. Um, you can see on the side, my layers tab, which I keep really organized. The first few months of me adopting this technique, I kept my layers really messy, which is kind of a nightmare with the style of um, painting that my illustrations kind of demand of me. Um, about the illustration itself though, um, I have been going through some feelings about my hair. Um, since pandemic started earlier this year, a lot of people, myself included, have been um, cutting their hair at home, which is unsurprising because a lot of places are closed down at the moment. Some are starting to reopen. It is November, so, you know, people are starting to open their businesses back up out of necessity. Um, but for those who can't afford it, you know, they just cut their hair at home and I'm one of those people. Um, that being said, hair in general is something that's really, really important to me because well, on one hand, it does have to do with um, how I present myself and how I interact with my gender and my own experience with gender. And on the other hand, it is just something I do. Um, I was notorious in high school for chopping off my hair basically every couple of weeks on my own. Um, I think there was a running joke at one point where um, people were like taking bets on whether or not I was going to chop my hair off. Um, I think like before the end of the year, like just completely shave it off. Um, yeah, so hairstyle in general is something that's like really, really important to me. It's something that like I interact with and, and play with and just overall mess around with. Um, so this piece is a reflection of that. It's me in the bathroom of my apartment planning out how to chop my bob into a messy mullet. Um, honestly, I'd really be surprised if I don't shave my hair down before the end of the year. It would be honestly really, really funny if I did. Um, and you know, I haven't had shaved hair, like completely shaved hair, for a long time now. I think the last time I shaved my hair down to the scalp was, I'd say like two years ago, solid two or three years ago. Um, so that's, uh, that's been a while. It has been a while. Um, yeah. So, back to drawing, right? Um, right now I'm kind of figuring out the background, just adding a little bit of here and there. The walls in my apartment are all white, so I'm just trying to suggest a lightness to the piece and give it a sense of where the light is coming from. Just, you know, run-of-the-mill light source <laughs> tips. Uh, <laughs> a really cool thing that I'm trying out with this drawing actually is that warm, almost golden glow bordering the skin. 
I've done it a couple times in some older drawings, but I kind of wanted to, ex um, what's the word, explore the effect a little bit more with this illustration. And honestly, this um, illustration really isn't that very detailed. It's really experimental. A lot of my stuff lately has been really experimental. I'm still trying to mess around with the um, CMYK um, process that I've been doing. I'm admittedly a little bit out of practice with it, um, since I actually only know very few good color combinations. Um, so I'm always trying to find ways to explore and push the four color technique that I learned. Um, yeah, it's really fun. Admittedly, I really enjoy doing it. It's just, it's easier to think in the four color process. Um, in my opinion, I, like I said, I don't really want to think too hard about um, the way colors interact with each other. Um, I actually think this is a really simple way of thinking in that way because um, I used to do a lot of painting. I used to do a lot of observations. Um, you painting from life, um, color studies from life, all that good stuff. And I, as much as I had fun with it, it was also kind of really difficult. I think I was always someone who leaned towards um, a very saturated, um, oversaturated, over, um, an all over the place um, kind of palette. So learning this technique was really, really fun because it's like, yeah, you know, I don't really stray too much and I don't really have. Uh, what's it called? Messy palettes? Much anymore? So yeah, you know, that's what I'm doing. Um, a couple times in the video, you'll actually see me kind of mask the areas that I'm trying to color. You know, I like to do this thing where I just kind of like... I like to color in sections. So something I would do is I would draw the outline or the shape of the section that I'm um, painting in, coloring in and I would use the mask tools to just restrict myself to that area because I like to do these almost cross-hatching kind of um, motions with my pencil and it's kind of hard to stay within a very specific section especially if it's not like an easy shape like a box or a circle or something of that sort so it's easy it's easy to just you know take the extra step step <laughs> take the extra step to just define the area that I'm working in and use the mask tool, use the selection tool, and just make myself work in that area. And it also makes it really easy um, to work in the same color, uh, no, in different colors in the same area. Because like I said, like I have to keep track of these layers and groups that I'm working in. So my layer count honestly goes up to the hundreds. I think I broke the 150 um, milestone the other day, which was <laughs> kind of insane, not gonna lie. But um, yeah, you know, just uh, I think from here, I will just like leave some music and let you guys listen and watch me slowly go insane as I keep working on this. Um, I hope that answered some people's questions about the brushes and the textures that I use. I really don't use much texture at all. I honestly don't even use a texture pack that often unless I really think I need it. Um, all of my texture comes from the dissolve mode, the fill dissolve, the brush dissolve. Um, I don't really use the multiply dissolve, uh, not multiply dissolve, the um, the layer dissolve mode because that just it doesn't really do much but um yeah i'll just uh leave the video um to some music and i hope you guys enjoy uh thank you i guess for giving me a reason to actually make this video this was actually really fun to make i was really charmed when i was editing this and just like goofing off and making commentary on myself um if you guys didn't notice <laughs> I will link the brush that I use, um, Joy Ang's brush, like I said. I'll link that down in the description box, and I will also link the <laughs> link to my website because, in case some of you don't know, I did open my store this week. Um, yesterday, as I am 
what's called um, recording this audio and commentary <laughs> literally the same day um, that I made the uh, the shop opening. It's really, really nerve-wracking. I'm very, very happy about it, but I'll talk about that in a vlog or a Instagram live. I don't know yet. Um, this is all very new to me. It's all very humbling, actually. So, you know, thanks everyone for all your support. Seriously, it means a lot. Um, <laughs> God, I always want to say this, but uh, hey, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, seriously, thanks. 